In this tutorial, you'll learn how to control the position of gauge needles with custom properties. In Kanzi Studio, open the project stored in Kanzi Workspace, Tutorials, Gauges, Assets. Adjust the preview zoom level so that you can see all three gauges. From the assets, drag the speed needle image and drop on the preview. Kanzi Studio creates a new image node that shows the image and places it into the top left corner of the screen. Select the Guides node and press Ctrl H to reveal the guides you can use to set the precise position of the needles in the gauge. In the preview, enter the Edit mode and select the Speed needle. In the Node tool, select the Render Transformation for the target transformation. Use the render transformation unless you know you want to recalculate the layout. In the node tool, click the top center square to align the speed needle node to the top and center of the gauges node. Place the bottom of the needle exactly on top of the crosshair in the guides. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in. Add and set the render transformation origin property. In Kanzi, by default, the origin of all 2D nodes is in the upper left corner of the node. Because you want to rotate the needle around the bottom center of the needle, you have to use the render transformation origin to place the pivot there. In the library, create a custom property type to control the position of the speed needle in the gauge. In Kanzi, properties allow you to specify and examine the state, appearance and behavior of nodes. Add the property you created to the gauges node. You control the position of the speed needle from the gauges node. In the speed needle, create a binding that connects the rotation of the speed needle node to the value of the speed property in the gauge node. You have to subtract 140 from the value of the property to correctly position the needle at value 0 on the gauge when the value of the speed property is 0. You can now rotate the needle by adjusting the value of the speed property in the gauges node. Now create a node that shows the current speed as a numerical value. In the speed view node, create a text block node to show the current value of the speed needle. Move the speed value node above the speed unit node to show the value before the unit in the gauge. Adjust the font size and bind the text property of the speed value node to the speed property in the gauges node. When you change the value of the speed property, you rotate the needle and show the value of the property in the speed value node. Now you use the same approach you used to create the speed needle to create the fuel needle. From the assets, drag the fuel battery needle and drop it on the preview. Place the needle on the left of the speed gauge. Use the guides to precisely place the needle. Use the Render Transformation Origin property to set the origin of the node to the top center of the node. Rename the needle to Fuel Needle. Create a custom property type you use to control the position of the fuel needle in the fuel gauge. Add the fuel property you just created to the gauges node and in the fuel needle create a binding that connects the rotation of the needle to the value of the fuel property in the gauge node. Subtract 39 from the value of the property 
to correctly position the needle in relation to the value of the property. The gauges node has transparent openings for the fuel and battery gauges where you can see the position of the needle. The position of the nodes in the project defines the rendering order of the nodes. The node at the top of the scene graph shown in the project is rendered first and the last node at the bottom of the scene graph is rendered last. When you place the fuel needle node above the gauges, Kanzi first renders the fuel needle node and then on top of it the gauges node, which shows only a sliver of the fuel needle to create an elegant fuel indicator. Now use the same approach you used to create the fuel needle to create the battery needle. Again, rename the node with the help of the guides precisely place the needle and set the render transformation origin to the top center of the node. Because the only difference between the properties used to control the position of the battery and fuel needles is the name, duplicate the fuel property and rename it to battery. Add the property to the gauges node and create a binding that connects the rotation of the needle to the value of the battery property. This time you have to add 39, but use the negative value of the property because the needle rotates in the counterclockwise direction when the value of the property increases. Exit the edit mode, hide the guides, and place the battery needle above the gauges node. You can now control the position of all three gauge needles with the custom properties you created. In this tutorial, you learn how to create a turn indicator and control it with a property using the Kanzi State Manager. In Kanzi Studio, Open the project stored in Kanzi Workspace, Tutorials, Indicator, Assets. Create a custom property type, which you use to control when the turn indicator is switched on or off. From the Assets, drag the turn indicator image and drop it on the prefabs in the project to create a prefab. Prefabs allow you to create the building blocks of your application and make the application easier to maintain. Create a prefab for every item in your application that appears more than once or if you want to logically separate a part of your application. Add the turn indicator property to the prefab. In the state tools, create a state manager for the turn indicator prefab. Create two states and name one visible and the other invisible. One defines the state of your application when the turn indicator is visible, the other when the turn indicator is invisible. Add the opacity property to the prefab. With the opacity property you can control how translucent is a node. You add this property so that you can fade the appearance of the indicator. The default value of the opacity property is 1, which makes the node visible, so save that value to the visible state. Set opacity to 0 and save the value to the invisible state. Select the turn indicator property as the controller property. The value of the property set as the controller property defines the conditions when each state in a state group is active. For the visible state, set the value of the controller property to true. Leave the value of the invisible state set to false. Right click the invisible state and select set as initial state in this group. The initial state is the state that Kanzi uses when the application is first started. To keep the turn indicator off until the user switches it on, use the invisible state as the initial state. Turn the state tools off. Add the turn indicator to the gauges node and rename it. 
add the turn indicator property and enable it so that you can see the turn indicator in the preview. In the preview enter the edit mode and adjust the zoom level so that you can see all three gauges. In the node tool select the render transformation for the target transformation. Use the render transformation unless you know you want to recalculate the layout. Place the turn indicator so that it covers the off indicator on the left turn signal. Use the mouse scroll wheel to adjust the zoom level in the preview. Duplicate the left turn indicator and rename it. Place the right turn indicator on the right side and rotate it so that it points to the right. Hold down the shift key when you drag a node with the node tool to move the node in true horizontal to vertical line and to rotate it in 45 degree increments. You can now control the left and right turn indicators with the Kansas State Manager using the property you created.